You just ruined everything. Yeah, they got us way too drunk to do this. <laughs> Don't listen to any of this footage. We all met in high school. Yeah, it was high school, so basically you'd have to like pick up a yearbook and just like flip through some pages and be like, what? <laughs> what's that? And I, I met these, I met this one dude named Justin. And Tony lived in the same neighborhood as Justin. It, it, it turned out that he lived in my fucking neighborhood. Like he was like a dude who like lived like 400 feet from me. And we connected and he was like, yo, you should play in my band. Like he had this friend named Tim and Tim was like a really fucking dope guitar player. And uh, we were like, cool. We all kind of became friends, and we were like, oh, hey, we all play musical instruments. Let's play musical instruments together. From there, we basically met this other guy in the theater program. So, you know, we, we had fun together, and we had a really great rapport. Um, but we were just having fun. It was like, whatever. But uh, from there, he went off to college. I went off to college, and then when I left, they, uh, Justin, Tony, and Tim made Dio's trio. Tony Kissel on drums, Tim Longo on guitar, and Justin Brown on guitar. Me, Tim, and Justin, which is three, and three equals trio. We, we wrote a bunch, bunch of music that summer, uh, and the three of us, the trio, sort of formed and, and, and came up with the idea of Dio's trio. I came back from college, and um, I started playing with them. I played bass, and Justin and Tim were both playing guitar and doing harmonies and stuff, and that's kind of what was the, the genesis of the band, the true band. From this point when we had Sam come in, we were like, this is it. Tim and Justin on guitar, me on drums, and Sam on bass. So Dio's Trio was named because I had a t-shirt, Tony had a shirt that, that just had this face on it and it was like, wow! That said Dios Mio on it. It said, I Dios Mio. And that was designed by Flea of the band Red Hot Chili Peppers. And uh, I wore it way too much. He wore it all the time. So I was like, yo guys, <laughs> what wouldn't it be cool if I like, if we like, just had like a Dios Trio band. And they said, what if it was Dios Trio? And they were like, <laughs> yeah, cool. And the, I thought that that was just gonna die that way. I would say the band that we definitely all like clicked on. The first, our first influence was probably Terra Malis, um, and Fall of Troy. Fall of Troy. The Fall of Troy. And then from the Fall of Troy, we learned about Terra Melos, who is definitely without a doubt the biggest influence on the band. They're they're great. They they do so many interesting things with, with the guitar and bass and, and drums and, and the way that they compose music. It's really fascinating. And it like changed our perception on like how music could be made. Bikes. High on bikes. High on bikes. Right. Which is high, it's called High on Bikes. The album name High on Bikes came from a, a newspaper that we just found near train tracks when we were trying to come up with the album art. 
and high-end bikes, which came from an article that we found basically in a trash bin surrounded by trains. Think of that, that's pretty scary. There's just so many trains, but there's actually just one, so it's not that scary. And they found there's like this random like computer that was trashed, and there was like a newspaper in the middle of the forest randomly. And on the newspaper it said high-end bikes. And they were like, that's dope. So they took a picture of the box, the art box we made, next to the newspaper. It said high-end bikes. And that was the album. It was like, that's okay, that's the name of the album. That's sweet. So we were in my parents' basement recording the song, which is where we recorded everything thus far besides the litter box sessions. And we recorded this thing in probably like, I'd say a two week time period where we wrote like at least three songs in that moment. And it was a beautiful thing and we got it all done and, and we finally finished and we felt good about it and we released it and then whatever happened from there happened from there. So we put out this album in 2011, and it did really well um, online. It was crazy. Um, so this label in England picked us up, Well Weapon Records, and they distributed us. And this label in Peru picked us up. That was like the first full album. That was the, the beginnings of DS Trio. <laughs> It's the litter box. It's the litter box. It's the litter box. Welcome to the litter box. It's the litter box. It's the litter box. It's the litter box. Welcome to the show. So we played a show in in at the crypt. The crypt, which has like some like gravestones or some shit in their basement, and it's it's pretty fucking wild and kind of creepy and also cool. After that show. We, uh, we met Paul. Paul from Litterbox. Tone and Justin were talking to Paul. Paul was really drunk and thought our music sounded good because he was really drunk. And like when you're sober, you're like, this music is cool. But when you're drunk, you're like, this music is great. He came up to us after the show and was like, you guys are just so rad. Like, I, I did this thing uh, where we do a video and music called Litterbox, and you guys should totally do it. And. We didn't know what the litter box was before that, but I was like, yeah, let's do it. And we, we set it up really quick. Did the two songs and, and it was great. They turned out really well. And we're super thrilled to have been able to work with them um, and, and to have had such great response for both of those videos. Oh man, it was like winning the goddamn lottery. So we're working on a new album the two songs that we did for the litter box are going to be a part of the new album. It's going to be a full length that we are anticipating putting out in um, the end of the year, 2016. It's a lot of fun because we finally feel like we're like back as a band again and like we're writing music together and it feels like a natural and organic and we're not really forcing anything. Our ultimate goal is to is just to write great music and get a great response out of people. Not that I want this to be some sort of like elevated experience, but I want it to be something that someone can like take to heart because for us, it's a journey. Like Dan Marie was like a total dick, so I did. <laughs> You're just derailing this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs>